One Piece, the live action adaptation. That is right, everyone. It is finally here, the new beginning. And I'm titling this video that not only because it is, yes, the start of One Piece once again, but also we've transitioned mediums into live action, which means changes are abound. This is not going to be the exact same story just due to the restraints that various mediums of storytelling have here that aren't necessarily existent in manga or animation. And it's due to those constraints that have resulted in a whole lot of fans going into the show expecting the worst or just saying it's not even possible to create One Piece in live action. And I'm happy to say that while I do not think this show is perfect, it's proven certainly that wrong at least, because say what you will about these first three episodes, they are unabashedly one piece. And with the amount of just raw effort that is clearly on the screen, you end up kind of falling in love with this attempt at adapting One Piece, even when it does stumble, which it does do. If you're looking for just a completely spoiler-free quick thoughts on this adaptation, it's certainly worth any One Piece fan's time, and it's absolutely worth the time of somebody who's interested in a show that feels like a child's pirate fever dream in the best way possible. As I look back on my notes on episode one, I just find myself like constantly encountering pleasant surprises. Not only is there gore here in language that lets me know they didn't misinterpret One Piece as just being a kid's story, but the set design and costuming are truly next level to varying effects. I think the set design just works almost across the board always. There are some live action sets here that look like they are just truly picked up from the manga and put on the screen. Wow. The costuming though, while everyone seems like they've had the best done possible for them, there are certain characters who I think just can't really look that great in live action. And so when you're like, oh, that's true to the character, looks goofy as shit, but all right. <laughs> I knew it was gonna be good though, like right away, because even in the opening with Roger, his teeth, the crowd, the diversity of costuming, not just two characters you recognize, which did stand out in the crowd nicely, but to all in attendance just felt high effort, not corner cutting, which I feel like is that level of detail that really lets fans kind of sink in with hesitation, but it's like getting into water that's a bit too warm. You're like, ah, ah, oh, okay, it's kind of working. And then by the time the performance of Roger felt like it was emitting this historic moment, I was like, Expectations are being met. For fans though, it's the right call. That attention to detail will be appreciated, and One Piece, as I said, is supposed to feel like this absurdist pirate journey, so why not? We have people talking into snail phones. Let's have some people whose hair looks like it's a that. Which leads me into the performances, and I'm happy to say for the most part for the crew, they're strong. Zoro, Luffy, and Nami, the three core ones in the first three episodes, feel like those characters. I think they've done a really spectacular job. Uh, when the dialogue shines, they are able to absolutely feel like the truest forms of those characters in this medium I think we could ever expect to get. Usopp, I was a little more iffy on, though I only saw one and a half episodes with him. I got into the next episode too because I couldn't stop myself. And some of the supporting cast just didn't bring that level of performance fully across the board, uh, which I think is to be expected some. The dialogue that's being handed to actors here at points is corny, is over the top, and it's difficult to consistently make lines like that land. And I don't think any One Piece fan's going to be, oh, why is that in this show? One Piece is corny and over the top at times. That's why we love it. It's just difficult as a live action actor to fully embody that consistently. The big question though is, are the changes from the source material, which are here, while they do seem to have a general philosophy of being loyal to it, that there's some things that just had to change, do those changes make sense? And after especially a couple recent adaptations that I was having to deal with just changes that in hindsight make no sense, I felt like I was hyper alert for them here. Everything though I can tell so far, except for one detail about Luffy eating his devil fruit at the beginning, seems very much so to make sense and just following a philosophy of we're trying to condense this story down to make what they're covering in season one fit eight episodes, which has negative effects on the story for sure. This is a faster pace in my opinion than One Piece has 
ever been, but it's not to a debilitating or crippling degree. I'm a little concerned how it'll feel for people who have never watched One Piece, because I know I'm filling in some gaps that are left there with my own knowledge of the source material. So I'll be looking for people in the comment sections who haven't read One Piece and if they're able to fully keep up with the lore, the world building, everything that's going on. But my main concluding thought on episode one was, this seems like a triumphant adaptation of the beginning of One Piece. It's not perfect. I found myself groaning sometimes at the humor. There were visuals, especially, that I was just woo on. But there were also some when I was really impressed how well they landed. I will also say the relationship between Zoro and Luffy felt so spot on right away. You could just tell where it was gonna go and it felt earned immediately. The whole great thing as well with Luffy just like, oh, please do this for me. I'd appreciate it. I'm gonna let you go, Nox. I need you to join my crew, but you're a good guy. And like, you can see the overwhelming wild monkey charm of Luffy just crawling into Zoro and making him be like, Darsh, I'm gonna love this man, God damn it. <laughs> it. It gave me a lot of warm fuzzies. Episode two though, I have really good news for fans here. Buggy stole the show, which is just kind of hilarious on even a meta level for One Piece. The performance of Buggy was wild and the effects for him well, they were also maybe at times the worst in the episode, in general, were great. I wish maybe they had utilized him a little bit less because I feel like he was on screen so much that some of that first surprise wow factor of this bubbly performance was diminished slightly. But overall, the setting for him, the having like this captive audience, his crew, the whole like momentum of this sequence with Buggy was fantastic. There was also a continual layering in of really trying to hammer home who Luffy is as a character, which comes across as over the top in episode one and episode two, but that is Luffy as a character. Luffy as a character is just taken to a max in the personality traits that he does have. And then seeing the relationship with Zoro Nami and uh, Luffy kind of really start to form here in this episode as they find some loyalty to each other provided enough heart that I hope even people who don't know where this story is going can begin to latch on to the family that's forming here. And we all know that is the soul of One Piece. It is truly about the relationships of the Straw Hat crew to each other. And if we consistently see this level of kind of charming, heartwarming bonding going on, I believe this could be a successful full realization of the Straw Hat crew. And I cannot believe I am saying that. And there was a ton of action in episode one and slightly less percentage wise in episode two, but episode two provided some more one piece in style action without getting too much into it. Kayla, what did you think when you first saw Buggy chop himself up and start floating? What? <laughs> That's what I'm really enjoying. Like, I think they fully know not all of these devil fruit powers are going to come across super cleanly, but they're still going balls to the wall with them and just letting them be what they're gonna be. And the end of the fight sequence being this choreographed between the crew throwing Buggy into a chest and it paying off. It all worked. It came together for live action pretty darn well. Also, my cat licks this plant like it's a devil fruit. He will never stop. I really like how they're doing these fights. They certainly are relying on whoever the people they're fighting are that need to lose if they're outnumbered, just kind of doing that clumsy running around falling over each other so that way the choreography can make sense. But... Aside from that, the stylization and display of athleticism from either the stunt performers or the real actors in certain shots is impressive. Anime manga action coming into live action is tough to do, and One Piece seems to be some of the toughest I could imagine trying to bring to the screen, and this was done better, especially with Luffy's abilities, than I thought we would get even in the best case scenario, because I guess I just have like Reed Richards from those Fantastic Four movies seared into my brain where it just looks so upsetting. Luffy's also does look kind of upsetting, but in a much more refined way. And they're not just doing these big over the top hits. He also has these smaller moments where you're like, oh, did he just extend a little? And it's all blending together to feel like his powers haven't necessarily yet been reduced 
for this live action show. Granted, they are certainly not fully on display as much as they are in the manga or anime, uh, but even in the small moments where humor can come from Luffy's power, they're leaning into it. I fully believe they will have to pull it back to a certain extent if we're getting to like gear four or five eventually, just because how the hell would you ever even do that? What the fuck? In contrast to that though, with the breakneck pace Netflix is setting for themselves in this first season and not stumbling over yet in the first three episodes, take with that what you will, the ambition is there underneath this all, it seems to at least try and get late into One Piece as an adaptation. I don't think it's possible they could get all the way even close to like Wano, but I can imagine they will continue to push things together. And I'm really curious on what the story for the later seasons of One Piece will be here, uh, because it seems like it could be truer to the original story than I thought possible. I mean, hell, maybe they'll just look at one pace and start just copy pasting it as much as they can. <laughs> but getting to the closing of episode two, uh, yeah, the heartwarming bonding with Loofers and his best buds really stole the show. And I liked the flashback parallels uh, to Shanks and kind of a subversion for new viewers of like, oh, is Luffy constantly abandoned? No, he's constantly having people show up and show love for him. And that's why he's such a positive amazing pirate because he's not about you know a tragic origin where he's abandoned by Shanks and instead it's like no Shanks showed up when he needed to and guess what so does his crew and that that's really beautiful and it was the first instance in this show where I went that made me feel the same that One Piece has at times in terms of just internally going oh episode three this was where that mismediumed for me came in stronger than ever. That doesn't mean I don't want this live action show. I'm thoroughly enjoying it. It's just there's this little nagging voice in the back of my head that's like, that was better in the manga and anime, and it, it couldn't be better here for what we're getting, but this is what we're getting. Here our crew is arriving with Usopp. We get that introduction. Kaya, Kaya. I swear I heard people pronouncing it differently in the show. That was strange. And Usopp's performance I think is the most challenging as an actor, aside from Luffy, of anyone in the crew so far, because he is kind of in this manic Usopp way that it was the reason I did not like him when he was first introduced as a crew member, even when I was reading the manga. And I'm fully expecting the same thing to happen where I originally did not like Usopp. And then by like, you know, a couple arcs down the road, I was like, I will die for Usopp. So I'm hoping the same thing is realized because it is kind of true to Usopp's character. He's oddly hateable for me, and that's how I was first introduced to Usopp. And I also realized in this episode that they are leaning into the over-the-top outfits and costume changes to happen. I love the One Piece crew getting new outfits, wearing new stuff, while having their stable wardrobes, of course, most of the time. But we're seeing Nami, Zoro, and Luffy dress up, dress down, have different shirts on. And I don't know, maybe that's just the buy in me, but I'm kind of having a blast seeing what they can bring to the table for, like, the uh, aesthetic for a certain setting. And I, I really hope that does not stop. Seeing this crew get costumed up is a lot of fun. Kayla has been trying to educate me in the history of fashion. So I'm hoping I can like turn around and be like, well, I'm gonna educate you in the fashion of pirates. <laughs> Apparently my publisher says I don't promote my own book enough. So excuse me, quick break from the review for the equivalent of a sponsor for me to just say, look at this book right here. I wrote that. It's, it's pretty good. You should go ahead and check it out in the links. Down below, Neon Ghost, which is sent by Daniel Me. And this was the episode where I kind of stopped paying much attention to the weaker visuals that were there because I just accepted, yeah, Netflix didn't cook this all the way through till it was done. There's some things that could have used some polish, but the overwhelming sense of fun that I was having and especially enjoyment of how much of the world building they've kept uh, kind of just erased that from my brain because I started just wandering off like, oh my God, when we get to do Flamingo, are we gonna keep that, this, that? What about the elephant? Ah, oh! the ambition and effort combined with the fun that is clearly being had on screen really does manage to erode away any nagging like feelings of, oh, that's not right, this isn't right. So while I don't think it's perfect, it's definitely more positive than not. Though this was the first episode that I had a problem with outside of just like the one PC and adaptation, I felt like the structure could have been a bit refined in the script uh, to set up a mystery and pay off without it being quite so obvious or a villain like 
as ham-fisted, though you could argue that's the point. It's just one of those points where I'm like, okay, are people coming into One Piece for the first time going to enjoy this as like the schlocky kind of endeavor that it is? Or are they going to be wondering the same thing I am of like, well, that mystery could have been delivered a little smoother. And yes, I got decently into episode four before I finally passed out. That's the truth of the matter. I woke up at 2.50 a.m. to go ahead and try and binge all of One Piece. I fell asleep halfway through episode four, not because the show wasn't really fun, uh, but because I'm a tired 30-year-old-ish man. But One Piece is kind of crawling into that like, oh, we're being hunted into this mansion point where I left off. And I felt tension. That was the main takeaway for episode three slash four for me. When when this adaptation is trying to go for a certain emotion or a vibe, it's succeeding. And that in itself is so much more than I could have hoped for, for adapting in my experience of anime manga I've read, consumed, the hardest anime to adapt ever, at least on the visuals and world building levels, which is something that on average is again, better than I expected. I don't think this is quite at the hype. I'm seeing some people put it out where it's like perfect best show of the year. Uh, but in terms of just, is it making me feel like I am experiencing one piece yet again? Yeah, absolutely. It, it really is in that that put this, I can't not, I can't take this smile off my face right now. That's the review of this out of 10. I can't take this smile off my face. It's not a 10, but it's, it's like above a seven. <laughs> That's where I'll put this actually. It's between a seven and an eight. Oh my God, I can't believe I'm getting to say that. Well, let me know what you thought of the first three or more episodes of One Piece in the comments down below. Like and subscribe if you have not already and put on your straw hats because in a week or so, once I feel like everyone's had time to consume the show, we'll do a full spoiler filled review uh, from beginning to end. And uh, that'll be a lot of fun as well. Have a good one, y'all. I gotta go make fantasy news. Peace.